Oh, that is so cool. What's up guys, welcome back for another beautiful day of experimenting. In this video, we're gonna revisit a failed experiment from before and turn it into a success. Now I've noticed in my last couple of videos, the comments have been blowing up with people asking me to put liquid nitrogen in a vacuum chamber. You probably remember we did this in a previous video and we didn't have any success at all. No matter how long we ran the vacuum pump or how hard we tried, we just could not get the nitrogen to freeze. But today is gonna to be different because today, I guarantee success. Now I have to admit that the first time we tried putting liquid nitrogen into a vacuum chamber, I really thought it was gonna freeze. I didn't see any reason why it wouldn't because there's plenty of videos online of people getting it to work, all the way from science laboratories to vacuum chamber channels to Cody's lab. So when we experienced such catastrophic failure, I was very discouraged and wondered why. So here's what I did. I reached out to my friend Cody from Cody's lab to see what suggestions he had, and he said, the problem was this thing right here. Look how big this cookie jar is. Look how much volume it takes up. And look at the size of our vacuum pump. This container with this pump just doesn't work. The theory is, is that our little vacuum pump just can't pump fast enough to keep up with the size of this jar. So the solution really is as simple as grabbing a smaller jar. So a big shout out to my friend Cody from Cody's Lab for the suggestion on using a smaller jar, because today we're gonna put that to the test and it's gonna work. So here we are guys, I just took a styrofoam cup, filled it up with liquid nitrogen, and got myself one of these little wine glasses. I'm going with the wine glass because it's got a nice large base and it should help keep the nitrogen insulated and high up off the ground. Now before we jump into trying to make this work, I wanted to quickly address some of the comments I saw the last time we attempted making this work. Some people thought the reason it wasn't working is because we actually need to add pressure rather than reduce it. That would actually have the opposite effect than you think it would, and I'll tell you about it in just a minute. But first, let's get to pouring our nitrogen. So the nitrogen is in our cup, and I think just to cool down this container, I'm gonna add a splash of nitrogen to the jar itself. We don't wanna freeze the glass, we just wanna cool down the atmosphere inside. Good stuff. That's just gonna help the atmosphere in the cookie jar cool down a little bit so it's not quite as warm. So our glass is cooled down, you can see it's about halfway full. We'll just top it up a little bit more. And we're gonna set that down inside. And you can see I got lucky because the top of this glass is just barely under the level of our protoputty there, which means we can stick this thing on top. Now right now what's happening is the nitrogen's boiling. It's actually turning into a gas and it's creating pressure. And if I were to hold this thing on hard enough, it would actually create a gas that wants to escape. Too much pressure and the container would explode. If I open this valve here, you can actually feel the nitrogen vapor pushing out and building pressure. And because that gas is expanding so rapidly, we need a vacuum pump that can suck it in faster than it's expanding. But in this case where I've got a smaller vacuum pump, we should be able to achieve the same effect by using a smaller container. At least that's the theory. All right, so we've got our valve set. This one is open so it can draw a vacuum and this one is closed to prevent any air from getting in. So now all we have to do is fire up the vacuum pump, let it suck out all the nitrogen vapor and then give it about a minute to react. All right, here we go, game on. You can see it starts pulling the vacuum right away. We're already about almost 15 inches of mercury. And the nitrogen actually starts accelerating in the way that it boils. It actually boils more rapidly. And what's happening now is all the energetic molecules in there are being released and pulled out of the nitrogen. And what that's doing is making the nitrogen itself actually colder. And if we pull out enough of those vibrating molecules, it should get to the point where it actually freezes. 21 inches of mercury. And I'm thinking we should start seeing something happen in the next few seconds. There, look at that. The nitrogen has gone completely quiet and the top layer just froze. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is awesome. So right there, about 22 inches of mercury is where we start seeing the frozen nitrogen. So that's really cool guys, about 22 inches of mercury and we saw the top layer start to freeze and then it kind of exploded and then refroze and exploded and refroze again. And you'll notice the whole thing didn't freeze, it was just the top layer and everything underneath it was still liquid. But if we let it run long enough, we can actually extract enough heat energy to turn the whole thing into nitrogen snow. So right now we're about 20, almost 22 inches of mercury and we should see, you can see the, the liquid's gone completely calm, it stopped boiling. And now if you watch very carefully, you see the whole top layer crystallize. Oh, that is so cool. 
It's got this amazing cycle of freezing and then it explodes and then freezes and explodes again. But that's not even the cool part. We are just getting started. So I've had this thing running for about three minutes now and you can see the top layer of the nitrogen is completely frozen, but everything underneath it is still liquid. Now, if we keep letting this run long enough, we should be able to get the entire solution to freeze into a glass full of nitrogen snow. And that is my goal for this project today. You know what I kind of want to do is switch glasses and see if we can freeze that quicker. I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Okay, watch this. This looks pretty cool. That's pretty, huh? All right, this is where the magic happens. This is gonna look really cool. You can see how that's just boiling like crazy. The nitrogen is going nuts. Oh, here we go. We're starting to see it freeze. Cool, that looks really cool. You can actually see the layer of ice floating on the top there and you can see it's still bubbling up from underneath. It's because it's digging down now and extracting any energetic molecules and allowing them to escape. And as it starts doing that, we'll see that layer of ice begin to thicken and start freezing from the top down. We're getting pretty close to the bottom there. And what I'm noticing is as the ice freezes, it actually moves upward as well. Because I think, you know, somehow, I wouldn't say it's adding air to the mixture, but the way it's freezing, the crystal structure is expanding. So you can actually see it's rising up. Hmm. That is really cool. So guys, we did it. We actually froze our liquid nitrogen completely solid. It's at the point now where there's no more liquid. The whole glass is completely full of nitrogen snow and nothing is moving any longer. I have to wipe down the sides of the glass because the chamber is cold enough that the moisture in the air is condensing to it, making it difficult to see in. But I think it's very apparent from this angle, we have just frozen liquid nitrogen. What you're looking at here is solid nitrogen, which is very, very cool. Now watch what happens if I close this valve and turn off the pump. You can see it maintains a vacuum pressure. If I wipe this down so you can get a better look, you can see it still stays in its snowy state as long as there's a little bit of pressure. But you gotta remember the nitrogen is still warming up. And as it warms up, it's gonna release gas, which increases the pressure, which is gonna make this thing liquefy over time. Yeah, you can already see it starting to warm up. The liquid is starting to boil at the bottom again. And this is with nothing happening. The vacuum pump's not running. I'm not letting any air in. This is just it sitting by itself. So right now we are literally melting nitrogen ice cubes. This is a little bit easier than the last time we tried it. Oh yeah, there it goes. Still looks a little bit slushy. While we're here, I'm gonna get that back into an ice form. So I've just closed the valve and I've turned off the vacuum pump. Now over time it will warm up and it will begin to melt. But watch how dramatic the change is if we open the valve and let all the air rush back in. Holy heck. Wow. Okay, so I might have let the air in a little bit too quickly. It created a vortex and all the nitrogen went spewing, but you can see it turned from ice to liquid in a fraction of a second. Let's try that again, but this time let's let the air in a little bit slower so we can actually watch the nitrogen melt. Okay, I'm gonna shut this guy off. Here we go. That is absolutely beautiful. Look how cold that got. That was amazing, guys. Like when we let the pressure in, you could actually see the ice melting. And uh, the slower we did it, the slower we could get it to melt. And now what we're left with is this super cold liquid nitrogen. And this stuff is really special because it's actually colder than regular liquid nitrogen. For example, we take this cup here and we pour in regular liquid nitrogen. You can see it jumps up to a roaring boil. Even after it cools the glass down, it boils dramatically. But the stuff we just pulled out of the vacuum chamber is completely quiet, it's completely still. It's not moving at all, and that's because this liquid is actually colder than the boiling point of nitrogen. How cool is that? So here we are, guys. We have successfully created solid nitrogen right in the comfort of our own home. And we learned a few things as we did. We started this experiment a couple months ago when we tried putting liquid nitrogen in a vacuum chamber, but unfortunately we couldn't get it to freeze. But in the comment section of that video, some of you inspired me to either use a larger vacuum pump or a smaller container. So in this experiment, we went with a smaller container and we found that it worked. Not only did we get the surface of the nitrogen to freeze, but we froze the entire cup. 
We discovered nitrogen goes through some interesting changes as it freezes as well. Once it freezes, it seems to explode back into a liquid and then refreeze once again. But after repeating this cycle a few times, we saw that all the liquid did eventually freeze. We learned that this happens because as you reduce the pressure around the nitrogen itself, all the molecules with the most energy are free to leave. And of course, by allowing the warmer molecules to escape, only the colder ones are left behind, causing the liquid to freeze. We also saw that if we stopped drawing a vacuum for a long enough period of time, the nitrogen would warm back up, create pressure, and melt back into a liquid. The same thing was true if we opened the valve and let the air come back into the container. The nitrogen ice melted pretty much at the same rate we let the pressure back in. And one final observation we made was that liquid nitrogen that comes out of the vacuum chamber is actually colder than liquid nitrogen on its own, because it's actually cooled down well below its boiling point. And of course, I want to give a big shout out to our friend Aaron Greenham, who is one of hundreds of people asking for this experiment. Aaron, you can go check your YouTube inbox because I'm sending you 25 bucks. So there you have it, guys. Now you know how to freeze liquid nitrogen using common materials and things we made around the house. Thanks for joining me for this experiment. Thank you so much for your requests. And I'll be looking for you in the next video. Talk to you then. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Whoa.